Welcome to the first video about the history of medicine. Today we're going to discuss how did we get to where we are today. We're going to first start off by talking about the ancient times. People believed that diseases and illnesses were caused by demons and evil spirits. So they believed that whenever you got sick or had an illness or a disease, that was a result from an evil spirit or a demon coming into your body causing these issues. So they believed that their treatments were derived toward or directed towards relieving or eliminating these evil spirits. So everything went back to how could they remove these evil spirits and demons from your body to help cure you. Next we're going to talk about the primitive times, 4000 BC. Herbs and plants were mainly used for medicines. There are two that we're going to talk about that are still used today. There's morphine used for pain and digitalis for the heart. Morphine is derived from the opium poppy, is a potent narcotic analgesic, and is mainly used to manage pain. And then we have digitalis for the heart. That is a drug that is used to strengthen the contraction of the heart. It actually slows the heart rate and helps eliminate fluid from the body tissue. And that is actually derived from the foxglove plant. They also use trepanation as a treatment to treat insanity, epilepsy, and headache. It means uh, boring a hole in the skull. So they would literally take a drilling instrument, drill a hole into your head to relieve. Again, they believed in the demons and evil spirits caused the illnesses. So they would bore a hole, drill a hole into your skull to help relieve these demons and evil spirits to cure the insanity, epilepsy, and the headache. Average lifespan, about 20 years. Next is the ancient Egyptians, 3000 BC. These are the earliest people known to keep accurate medical records, meaning that they would actually write down what they did to treat people, what they used, and the different signs and symptoms. Physicians were mainly priests who studied medicine and surgery in the temple med medical schools, and they still called upon the gods to heal them when diseases occurred. So again, they still believed that the gods played a big role in curing them from any diseases or illnesses. In the ancient Egyptians, they were the, uh, we believe, had the first physician, it may have been Imhotep, but they still believe that magic and medicinal plants were used to treat most of the diseases. Ancient Egyptians, they also believed that the body was a system of channels for air, tears, blood, urine, sperm, and feces. So if one of these channels became clogged, they would use bloodletting or leeches to help open up the clogged channels. We still use leeches today for certain uh, circulatory conditions. If there is, sometimes they use leeches whenever blood circulation to the fingers or the toes has been inhibited and they're trying to increase it. They'll attach the leeches to the end of the finger or the toe to help the leeches suck the blood helping to improve circulation to increase the amount of blood flow to that certain area to help keep the tissue alive. Again, the average lifespan for the ancient Egyptians, 20 to 30 years. Moving on to the ancient Chinese, 1700 BC, they believed in the need to treat the whole body by curing the spirit and nourishing the body. They believed by carefully monitoring the pulse, they could determine the condition of the body. So if your pulse was increased or decreased, that means that there was something wrong and they could help determine what it was. They also used a pulse to determine if the women were pregnant or not. They also recorded a pharmacopoeia of medications based mainly on the use of herbs, basically like a big recipe book in which they would write down the type of plant, what, they, what it was used for, what it could be mixed with, and how it would treat certain illnesses or diseases. Ancient uh, Chinese also used acupuncture to relieve pain and congestion. They would use moxibustion to treat the disease by stimulating circulation in the body's chi. They would use moxibustion in, in, a, in uh, with, as lo along with acupuncture. They could use it by putting the moxibustion stick on top of the acupuncture needles or by simply burning it on the skin. They also began to search for medical reasons for illnesses. They believed that there was an actual reason for your body you know, being unaligned and there being an issue, not just the gods were mad at you or you had evil spirits and demons inside you. Average lifespan, 20 to 30 years. Moving on to the ancient Greeks, 12,000 BC. They began the modern medical science by observing the human body and the effects of diseases. 
They believed illnesses was a result of a natural cure, uh, a natural cause. Again, moving away from the belief in evil demons and spirits causing illnesses. So they would stress diet and cleanliness as a way to prevent disease. By eating properly and keeping yourself clean, they believed that was one way to help relieve or decrease the amount of illness or diseases they would get. They used therapies that we, are, that we still use today, such as massage, art therapy, herbal treatments. An important Greek, we have Alcmeon and Aristotle. Alcmeon was a biochemist that identified the brain as a physiological site of the senses, meaning that is where your body interprets your sense of smell, sight, touch, feeling. He is the one that developed that idea. And then we have Aristotle, who dissected animals and is called the founder of comparative anatomy. He is important to remember. He was very, very foundational in developing anatomy as we know it today. So remember, Aristotle starts with an A. Anatomy starts with an A. That's one way you can connect the two, Aristotle and anatomy. Next, we have Hippocrates. Most of you all have heard of him in one way or another. He is called the father of medicine. He developed an organizational method to observe the human body. He recorded many signs and symptoms of different diseases. He also created a high standard of ethics called the, the Oath of Hippocrates, which is used by physicians today, the, also known as the Hippocratic Oath. That is still used whenever physicians graduate with their medical degree. They still recite the Hippocratic Oath, or the Oath of Hippocrates. Moving on to the ancient Romans. 753 to 410 AD. They believed that diseases were treated by diet, exercise, and medication. Average lifespan, about 25 to 35 years. The ancient Romans, they were the first to actually organize medical care by providing it for their injured soldiers. There was a lot of fighting going on during the Roman times, and so they realized that with war, there was a lot of hurt and uh, diseases that came along with fighting and becoming injured. So they provided care for their soldiers. They also developed the early hospitals. They mainly, the early hospitals were whenever the physicians would actually come into the person's home and treat them whenever they were ill. And then it later developed into a religious or charitable institute in which the ill people were housed in the monasteries or the convents. And so the monks and the priests would take care of those that were ill or had diseases. They also began four very important public health and sanitation systems. They used aqueducts to carry clean water into the cities. They realized the importance of the cleanliness. They also used sewers to carry away waste materials from all the cities. So instead of throwing your feces or your waste materials out in the street to be carried away, they would throw them into the sewers and they would get washed out. They also had very large public bath systems and public bath houses, so they would use a filtering system to keep the water clean so, because these very enormous bath houses would have, if you can imagine, hundreds of people in them bathing at one time. So they would use a filtration system to help keep it clean. Next, we had, they would also drain marshes to reduce the incidence of malaria. Malaria is spread by the mosquito. Mosquitoes lay their eggs in uh, standing water. So by draining these marshes, it would reduce the amount of mosquitoes being born. An important ancient Roman is Claudius Galen. He's a physician who established many beliefs. He believed that the body was regulated by four humors or fluids, being blood, phlegm, black bile, and yellow bile. He, uh, he believed that the imbalance of these humors resulted in illness. He dissected many animals and determined the function of muscles, kidneys, and the bladder. He studied infectious diseases and studied the symptoms of inflammation. Moving on to the Dark Ages, 400 to 800 AD, the study of medicine was prohibited. The emphasis was mainly on saving the soul, so they reverted back to illnesses being a result from these evil spirits, meaning that they treated the diseases and illnesses by prayer and divine intervention in herbal mixtures. The monks and the priests were the ones who provided custodial care for the sick people. Custodial care meaning they simply helped maintain their quality of life. They didn't really treat anything. They would just help take care of them in their everyday needs. Middle Ages, um, the interest of the medical practice of the Greeks and the Romans was renewed. They realized that they needed to start studying 
medical practices and figure out how to treat diseases and cure illnesses. Physicians began to obtain knowledge at medical universities in the 9th century. Major diseases were smallpox, diphtheria, tuberculosis, typhoid, the plague, and malaria, which all ran very rampant in the Middle Ages. This is a map of the pandemic of the bubonic plague. Um, the map is the spread from orange to yellow to green to purple. The time frame of this is from orange in 1348, yellow 14, or sorry, 1349, green is 1350, purple 1351, red 1352. That was within a matter of four years that it spread and killed over three-fourths of the population of Europe and Asia. It was a very, very fast-spreading plague. It was spread from fleas would bite infected rodents, infected ant, uh, rats, and then those fleas would bite people spreading malaria or spreading the bubonic plague. Next, we have the Arab physicians. They used their knowledge of chemistry to advance pharmacology. Pharmacology is basically the study of how um, how medicines and herbs affect the body and the body systems. Arabs began requiring that physicians pass examinations and obtain licenses, meaning they would actually regulate who could become a physician and who could actually practice medicine. Razi is, is one of the very important people. He was an Arab physician that became known as the Arab Hippocrates. He based diagnosis on observations of signs and symptoms of diseases. In 1910 AD, he developed the criteria for distinguishing the difference between smallpox, smallpox and, and uh, measles. They both present themselves as red bumps on the skin. He suggested that blood was the cause of many infectious diseases, and he began the use of animal guts for suture material. He would actually sew people up using animal guts. Avanzar is another very important person of the Middle Ages. He's a physician who described the parasite causing scabies in the 12th century. Scabies is a microscopic mite that gets under the skin and eventually getting to your circulatory system and causing death. Average lifespan for the Middle Ages was 20 to 35 years. This will now complete the first video for the history of medicine.